There are no mistakes today. No mistakes. <laughs> it means whatever you do will not be a mistake. Whatever you do, right? We're here to play, to realize our own creativity again. It's very exciting. Do what I do after I do it. for you. That's our home base. Whatever happens around that home base doesn't matter. No mistakes. Right? But we always return to our home base for now. Ready? Let's all do it together at the same time instead of you coming after me. Ready? What if this space was an octave instead of just like a second? Right? When we go up, we go way up. When we go down, we go way down. Ready? Always back to home base. I'm gonna mess with our minds and it'll be okay. Ready? Oh, you're the THX sound. Congratulations. One more time. You're such a good choir. You don't have to be in tune with each other. You can literally go. Mm -hmm. Or. Mm -hmm. <laughs> literally anything. Ready? That's a shape, right? It's a shape. We made a shape. Let's try another one. That's another shape. That's a melodic shape. You've probably sung that shape before. Do, re, mi, fa, so, so, do. You just created a melody. It's not the melody that we're used to hearing, but it's a melody. One more time. Ah, that was a slowed down ornament from another part of this world. Right? Ah! Uh, <laughs> that's an ornament that plenty of other people do on a regular basis. We just don't get used to that. Doesn't mean we can't sing it, though. Have a seat. Uh...
That's a shape. Right? Same kind of shape that we just made. Except just a chord, because I looped myself very quickly. <laughs> but the shape that we just made, mm, let's try that. up at any point. We're all capable of doing this. It's very quick, but it's fun. This is a loop station, which means vocal DJs regularly use that thing to make beats. We make the beats, people dance to them. We add a texture, people dance to them. Or you can just deconstruct that thing and use it to your disposal, like I do. As a composer, I'm not an instrumentalist very bad at instruments. Don't ask me to play any instruments. Nothing. No. But you asked me to use my voice, and I can do that. We all can do that, right? We all have a voice. So the question is how to harness it to use our own brain for our own creativity. That's one way to do it, is to use a loop station. Basically, you create a loop, and depending on the length of that loop, you can create other textures. If you create a really short loop, when I press record very quickly, like It's a short loop. That means whenever I record over this, it'll record the length of that loop. Because I had a short loop, and it happened in the middle, I recorded it in the middle of my phrasing, of my, my singing, I created a beat out of it, out of just recording it. This is an instrument that is way overpriced. <laughs> and you can just get something on your phone for free. It's called the acapella app. Or it's called your voice memos. Or better yet, let's not even worry about technology. Let's just talk about how we get there. What is this? What do you see? A line. A line. What else? Curvy line. <laughs> Let's raise your hand so we can hear each other. Yes. A hill. A hill. Perfect. What else? Yeah. A shape. A shape. Totally. Yeah. A parabola. A parabola. Yes. <laughs> A wave. A wave. Yeah. A bump. A bump. <laughs> this is my cat under the carpet. <laughs> What's that? Looks like a snake. Luckily, it's not scary. Yes. Waves. Yes. Dragon things. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Looks like the end of what? Mm hmm. Wow. That's great. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like something you draw when you're on the wall. Uh huh. I did. My mom was mad. Yes. I thought those expensive noodles. Expensive noodles? Yes. Lasagna noodles. Awesome. <laughs> Sine waves, right? What's that? Fire. Fire. Yes. Termite hills. Brilliant. I love it. I love it when somebody says something new and people are like, Yeah. Using yes. paint. Using paint. Yes. Like a ripped piece of paper. A ripped piece of paper. A mountain range. Yeah. You guys know that here. Yeah. Like sound waves. Sound waves. Absolutely. How it changes, of course. Yes. Melted cheese. Melted cheese, yep. Yeah. On a wall. Yes. Um, to me it looks like a fish, like jumping out of the water. Like Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been looking at that like that's a dolphin. Yes. <clears throat> the shape of what? Ripped jeans. Ooh, well done. Yeah. Ant hills. Yeah. Uh, stalactites? Stalactites. Awesome. Those are all physical things. What's a non-literal thing that this is? What's something abstract? What could this be? Yeah. 
A what? 2D picture. A 2D picture. Let's go back a little bit. What could this represent? Uh, Raise your hand. Go ahead. No wrong answers. Yeah. Arise. Arise. Absolutely. Yeah. Like a change. A change. Absolutely. Like a specific change. Like emotional change. Right? Like I start sad, I get happy, then I'm sad again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're breathing. That's great. Absolutely. Yes. There's this thing that like we use in English, and it's like a hill. It's like it starts with like an expedition, or yeah, like a story arc. Oh wow! So it's like designing a form for something. Yes. Cool. We'll get to that in a second. Yes. Oh, cool. So, so that's like you know the the form maybe of uh, or maybe that's like the journey of a character in a book. That's somebody who's stuck in a cycle of that same thing, right? And that is a really complex emotion. This is anything that can be musical or non-musical, whatever. It could be whatever you want, right? But this could be the journey of a melody throughout a piece. Or this could be the amount of dissonance in a piece. Or this could just be like, you know, my heart grab every Friday. <laughs> what is this? What could this be in musical terms? Or like something, what does it represent maybe in music? Yeah? A song, like the meaning behind a song. The meaning behind a song. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Let's just automatically start there, one second. So the meaning behind a song. So this could be the initial like overall thought process emotionally of a song. These are the two components of that emotion maybe. And then it really means this. And here are the five different like attributes that make you recognize that you're actually there. Cool, what? The beat of a song. The beat of a song. <laughs> so we got the emotion of a song, then we got the beat of a song. Why? That's maybe the full beat. Then you see these two components, and it splits. Like, the beat is made up of these two components. But that beat is actually made up of something maybe more, you know, basic. And then those are made up of five different components. Yes? Mm-hmm, yeah, like maybe that is the five notes in a key. That together makes this chord. And then you add... And then you add maybe a bass. And that's that chord. Cool. Or... This could be, like we were just talking about, a form, where you've got the whole song, and you've got two components. Maybe you've got like a chorus that just keeps coming back, but it's throughout, right? So we can just leave that, leave that be. Then we've got like the form, the verses, and the bridge, but really together, it needs these five like instruments to make it happen. Like maybe drums, keys, what else? Windpipes. Yep, windpipes, bagpipes, <laughs> and five tambourines. <laughs> right? This could be anything. This could be anything. Right? Just like this. This could be anything. So you're, you're thinking musically. You're also thinking as a composer right now. Because that's what composers do. They're like, I've got a poem. Hmm, it's split up into three sections. Maybe I'll use that middle section for the majority of it. And then the opening and closing, I'll add in this little component. That'll make the whole thing work, right? But that main segment is filled up with five different types of segments. One second. So let's assume those are textures, right? You all know choral music. So really when you break it down, choral music is made up of a bunch of different textures, right? You've got what? What's one type of texture? What's one type of texture? A line. What would that be in a choral piece? A melody. Right? So it's more of a horizontal move. Or, you've got that, right? Less of a key and more of like a chord, right? Maybe you hear chords. Right? 
So if you're like me and can't do anything, as can be clearly seen by what I just did in the piano, <laughs> you create a chord on your own. <laughs> There's your chord. Then you create a melody on top of that. And the best part is you can create a melody and immediately listen to it and see how what it might need. so much what other people think about our creativity. Because society stifles. Exactly. <laughs> Raise your hand if you think that society stifles your own creativity. This is what I'm going to go to my grave trying to combat. That's bull. And that should not be the case. At some point, when you were a kid, raise your hand if you ever lived in a sandbox for a day. Raise your hand if you ever looked at a block of wood like me, it was like, that seems fascinating. <laughs> what can I do with that? We are not given license as young adults, older adults, balding adults, <laughs> to do this stuff. But all it takes is a couple seconds for you to remember that you are a chorister, that you can create a choir around yourself, and that you're a composer, and that we all are. How cool! All of us can think like a composer, but part of the problem is that there have been barriers to access for many, many parts of our field. Like my field, a lot of people don't tell each other how to be a composer. They just hope, you know, who, who will come out from the weeds. But I truly believe all of us are, because all we gotta do is think in shapes and textures. Who wants to create a texture? You wanna do it? Come on up, come on up. All right, it's simple. Okay. So all you gotta do is pick a note. Guess what, doesn't matter which note, every note is perfect, your note is perfect. Okay. You think about that note, you can sing it in advance. You're gonna sing it into the microphone, I'm gonna press record a certain amount of times, and then you'll just hear that note. Oh. And then we'll go from there. Ready? Mm -hmm. You got your note? Yeah. Go ahead. another note. Think of another note. <laughs> cool. Cool. Right? All it takes is like just acknowledging that we're just so used to being like, I don't know, I might fail. <laughs> but like, whatever, who cares? You all know how to build a chord. You all know how to tune to a chord. The best part is with this stuff, you're tuning to yourself. Two more people come up at the same time. Yes. Here, here, here. Yes, these two. We'll have plenty of opportunities. Oh, I wanted to go back to the time. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So here's what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to tag team. Every person is going to pick another note. Okay? You just pick a note, and then we'll go back and forth. Okay? You got your note? Yeah. And here's the secret. If you're not sure which note, if it starts like, ooh, and I'm like, I don't know what to add to that, I'll go, ooh, and then I've got my note. Like, literally does not matter. Okay? So pick your first note. Ready? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Ooh, a sharp one. <laughs> okay, great. You got your note? And you can sing it before you before you Yeah, okay. You got it? Okay, go ahead. Um ooh, I like that. Mixed vowels. Got another note? Can go higher too. Okay. Awesome. Crowdfunding. Crowd. A uh, uh, bees. Be a uh, uh, hive mind. Who else wants another note? Raise your hand. Sing it. Go ahead. Sing it. Another note? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Wait, what do you think? Go ahead. What is it? practice that. How cool, right? Here's another example, okay? What I do is, is create pieces for choirs, as you know, and then I want to subvert them. So we'll start with this. This is a nonsense piece. Like nonsense, literally, minyamanaya. I don't know. I started singing in my shower. My partner was like, what is that? I said, I don't know, I like it. I like it. Now, side note, that kind of thing exists around the world, and sometimes there are folk traditions that are based off of nonsense pieces. There's an area called Lapland in northern Finland where they pass down folk songs with nonsense syllables. It's not like, oh, I'm taking the milk, you know, from my cow to my house. <laughs> I need it's to listen to that. It's literally <laughs> just like, blah, 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 and it's a beautiful melody. That piece, I created out of thin air, whatever, for fun, with textures, as you can hear. And then I had it published. That piece was being put in a box. So I want to change that. I think it stifles creativity. And I think there's a time and a place for creativity. And that's always. What you're about to hear was made from this loop station. And another one that Kimbra uses. Look up Kimbra if you don't know her. She's awesome. This is the same piece. Kind of. I didn't know what I was doing here. I was just making up a texture. <coughs> the other loop station that I mentioned, it harmonizes with you. Unless you're not quite in a key, in which case the harmony doesn't really know what to do. So you can make dissonances. 
like here I just noticed that it was all kind of the same, so I wanted to add some sort of another texture, like a na 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 and build a chord around that. I also didn't really know what key I was in. So I decided to add... Sure. Remember how I said the same piece? pieces, which everybody says is a box that you put yourself into. And then I want to create different textures around that so that you can choose which variations you want. So you learn the piece, it's the same piece, same piece. And then you add other things around it to change the way that you hear a piece. Awesome. So what is my actual process? My actual process usually involves not nonsense pieces. Uh, it involves finding a poet or a poet that I really get excited about, right? And I start to read that poem until it starts to sing to me. What does that mean? It means that when we speak, we sing. And when we sing, we speak. What does that mean? If I say the same thing over and over, I start to realize that it's a shape. I start to realize that it's a shape. I start to realize that it's a shape. Realize that it's a shape. I start to realize that it's a shape. I start to realize that it's a shape. I start to realize that it's a shape. Guess what? That's a melodic shape, just like when we sing it. I start to realize that it's a shape. Bum ba na ba na ba ba ba. Bum ba na ba na ba ba ba. Bum ba na ba na ba ba ba. Bum ba na ba. And there's my key. It's all related to what I spoke, right? Which feels much more natural to me. This idea of like. I am in love. Doesn't really make much sense to me. Does it? <laughs> That's great. Totally fine. There, there are places for that. But ultimately, I don't like speaking it that way. My partner kind of walks out of the room if I say it like that. Right? I say, I am in love. I am in love. I am in love. There are also a wide variety of ways to say things. I am in love. I am in love. I am in love. In love. I am in love. I am in love. I love. I am in love. I am in love. I am in love. Right? That would get annoying real quick. <laughs> but there are multiple ways to say things. So why should we uh, limit the way that we say things to something very simplistic? Right? Now. My process involves this, and then I figure out what the rhythm is generally, and then I figure out what the harmony is generally, right? But it's not really useful if no one else can read it. If I write down exactly what the rhythm is, if I write down exactly what the rhythm is, but ba 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 da ba da ba da, that's probably not easy for you to sight read. But da ba 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 da ba da ba da, right? Can you like <laughs> notate that right now? Probably not, right? I can't even notate that right now. But what you do is you get used to figuring out how to notate it in a way that other people can read it. I know generally what that rhythm is, and I know how to notate that. And we all know kind of what that is. 16th, 8th, 16th, 8th. Right? So you figure out these different phrases, which all of you, as choir members, can do. You know what those are. You've seen them. You know? You also know what you hate to read. Can we all circle around this? Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Come circle around. What is, uh, what's, what's a melody that you have all been singing? Great. So where, what key would you, mm, generally? Mm, so, let it be, let it be. Right? Does that work? Okay. Let's try that. Uh, just that phrase. Okay, just that. Ready? And sing it out 
this thing is just one mic. Okay, ready? One, two, and. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Did it also record the, the bass? No, that was just the bass just now. Okay, great, awesome. So let's pick a note from that. You could pick Do or another note. Do you want to start with Do? Why don't we start with Do? So we'll sing Ooh in that, in that octave. Let's try that note. This doesn't have to be perfect. This is a new version of Let It Be. <laughs> you just right? made it up. Yeah, we just made it up. Here's the other thing. If chords don't fit, but they're still in the key, they still fit, in my opinion, right? Just because that doesn't necessarily sit with the chords in this moment, what we're creating are textures, right? We're not creating like a perfect song form. Good luck, it's the same that we've always heard, okay? So what if we add can you go awesome you're so together it's wonderful now can you just like do it relatively slowly but all of you are slightly different tempo like you'll go na 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 but you go na 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 and you go na na okay so we'll all be that same note but we'll be different tempi let's try it ready Go ahead. I just want to acknowledge this is my favorite chord of all time and I always use it. It's like my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> Six four chord with a four in the bass. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. This is so cool.